Hello and welcome to. <laughs> it was really loud. Hello and welcome to This Is. There's a new kid in town when it comes to gaming. It's not Nintendo. It's not Microsoft. It's not Sega. even PlayStation. It's definitely not Sega, but maybe it will be in the future. There's a new streaming service, a new player, and it's Netflix. I am going to be very honest and transparent with you. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gist of my conversation for this video. What is, okay, so I understand that Netflix have acquired a number of studios slash licensed games. They have very quietly, over the past, you know, several months, they have been inquiring left and right and a lot of IPs. They're gathering up this gang of, of studios and they are trying to release games that will be included with your Netflix subscription. For now, on the surface, it makes sense that Netflix as an entertainment company wants to be involved and have their hands in every entertainment pie they can, right? I, I get it. Gaming is a huge, huge revenue driver. Mobile games make billions and billions of dollars. Like, I get it. But what I don't understand, first of all, how someone who has a Netflix account even knows about the games. <laughs> and second of all, how do you download them? So what it's really trying to do, it's poised to try and be a competitor, not to like Game Pass or mm -hmm. like Stadia or Amazon Luna, but what this one is meant to compete with is uh, like Apple Arcade okay. or Google's Play Pass, which I have Apple Arcade just because I have it through um, Apple One. It's their all-in-one subscription service. It's pretty nice. I, like, I, I'll be honest, there's a lot of good games on there. I don't know if I would actually pay the five bucks or whatever it is a month. The main thing with these particular types of uh, streaming platforms is that they are actually trying to break the status quo of mobile gaming a little bit where there are no microtransactions in any of the games found on these platforms. It's like the old school, you know, you buy the game or you get it included in your subscription, and then you've got the full experience available for free, assuming that you're paying your $77 a month for your Netflix subscription. We're up to $20 a month for the premium Netflix, which is insane to me. It's a lot of money. Right, so, so it's rotated here. There we go. Okay. Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry, hang on. Wait, my label's not straight. There we go, my label's straight now. Are there different flavors of Coke coffee? Oh, there are actually. Yeah. This Dark video blends. is not about Coke coffee. It's delicious. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'll hook you up. I'm just trying to add a little extra spice, a little extra flavor in your life, much as Coke coffee does for me. <laughs> I will give them a little bit of props that Netflix, I think, has the widest catalog of not only licensed but also original content like i mean if i was gonna drop every streaming service i think netflix would be the last one i would keep just because there's so much stuff but i get the idea that they're trying to via gaming give you a little extra spice on your subscription yeah make it worth 25 dollars a month or whatever they want to charge you next month but the thing that i don't understand i really need you to guide me yeah. with your jedi like wisdom even though it's disney how as a netflix subscriber can i get access to these games because i'll tell you I am a Netflix subscriber, and if I wasn't paying attention to all the news, I wouldn't even know that this is included in my already paid subscription. And that's, uh, I'm gonna say that this is probably the most confusing and worst <laughs> way that things have been launched. I don't know whether this is like a soft launch that Netflix is trying to do. Like, Netflix has not sent, been like, oh yeah, come check out Netflix Gaming. They right. have not done that at all. You know, is it even called Netflix Gaming? Do they have actually like a brand for it? I don't think so. That's it's like, just this games. is like, it's just, it's just like, oh yeah, we bought all these gaming studios, and each of these devices here. So we have an iPhone, yep. a Samsung Z Flip uh, the 5G, because I don't get the new one, and then a Microsoft Surface Duo 2, because I'm the th third person in the world who has this. Each one of these has a different interface on how you see and discover games. I'm going to go ahead and open up my Netflix app on here, bring up Netflix. I'm going to go to Austin. I have my own profile? Yeah, I made, made a profile for you. Oh, that's so sweet. So if you look here, not a whole lot going on. Like, it's just it's movies. But if we scroll down, I mean, it's very much mobile games. It's kittens, teeter up, bowling ballers, whatever. They bought the rights to all these Stranger uh, Things pixel games. Which is kind of weird because those were licensed by Netflix in the first place. But whatever. Like, So it seems like an okay selection. What happens on an iPhone if I tap one of those games? So it's the same for both Android and iPhone. They're not in the app. It brings you here, get the game. Okay. And it brings you to the app store for Which each Which makes of sense because obviously they would immediately get super duper banned by Apple if they tried to let you play games inside right. the app. So it is just a glorified link from the Netflix app into the app store. I'm assuming if you actually purchase and download that game, you will need to authenticate and log in with your Netflix account to play it. You can go and get all of these apps on the app store like without going through Netflix first, but right. you need to sign in with your Netflix account, which Fair if enough. you have the app there, it, all, it just pulls in the authentication there. Oh, that's clever because that gets around having to pay Apple anything because it's free, free, free. 
and Apple's not going to get a chunk of your Netflix subscription. Yeah. What I'm curious with there is like whether it's going to stay that way. Yeah. So right now you don't have to pay anything extra. These games are included for free with your already very expensive Netflix subscription, correct? And that's kind of what I'm like. I mean, Netflix has the worst track record every year. It feels like they've they've in, in, uh, been increasing their price by a mm -hmm. buck or two. Yeah. The cheapest plan is still. 480p, right? 480p, and it's still fairly expensive. You know, it's it's still like double what I was paying for when I first started Netflix. Matt, have um, you ever heard of the thing called inflation and profits? Because yeah. both of those combined are a bad combination. I'm going to give them credit and then immediately take it away. Much like I immediately take away the a delicious buzz I get from Coke Coffee available at your local retailer. No, you 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 can't damage the, the brand. Our, our, I, I, I our wanna, I, you, you know, you're really turning me around on this. <laughs> I don't believe you, I but just, here... I'm gonna g <laughs> <laughs> This video has been brought to you by Matt's bad temper. I'm gonna give Netflix credit and say like it's great that they're actually just including this in your already existing Netflix account. Yeah. However, I do think they're just gonna use this as ammo and next year they're gonna be like, you know what? Look at all these additional services that we're offering you. When it, well, now your price is gonna be $25 or something or like that. Or what they could do is if they build out a big enough library of games, whether they're licensed or purchased, they could actually offer you a Netflix gaming subscription and just the same way as everything else, I feel like Apple might get a little salty about it, but they could theoretically with the workout rounds that they've done, you pay the $5 a month or whatever for Netflix gaming and instead of just getting pure video or something, you actually only just get the games that are available. So like, there's interesting sort of ramifications for why Netflix is doing this. I agree, it is incredibly bizarre that they are doing it in such a weird, like kind of quiet, like, it, it feels like a beta more than anything. Like, I, oh, I feel like this is a soft, a soft launch beta because right now they don't have any blockbuster titles. Like yeah. the Stranger Things games, they're actually pretty fun, but they're definitely not like platform selling things. Like on Apple Arcade, they have like some some of the like the Le like Lego games specifically. They have like a Lego version of uh, Super Smash Bros., which is like a really good game. There are some like proper uh, games on Apple Arcade. Right now, Netflix doesn't have that. So I feel like what's going to happen is they're going to just continue this kind of like soft beta, let people kind of trickle in, start to get some data on it, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and then like. All right, when they have like Squid Games 2, like the season two come out oh. and they have like a properly first person licensed uh, uh, game, that's when they like really announce it. You know, they're in a uh, position here and I feel like this is actually what Sony is going to be wanting to do a lot uh, in the future for this massive vertical integration of, look, if Netflix really wants to become a gaming company, these are the first baby steps, you know. Yeah, we're focusing on mobile games, but what happens when Netflix wants to get into like a AAA game? What happens when they make that game and they actually are able to leverage getting like proper voice actors? Like the actual actors from the show are like voice acting in the game. Well, they've been experimenting with this even before the broad games, right? Because they've also done the interactive things. Remember mm -hmm. there was a Black Mirror episode? Yep. Uh, uh, Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch. You they've were done... in that. Sorry, mate. Wrong path. Sticking around. As far as I'm aware, none of these games are available like on your TV or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. One of the things is like, all right, well, how profitable is this going to be? Because, mm -hmm. you know, mobile games are super profitable because of all the microtransactions. Sure. But you know but, what's also profitable? Paying an extra two bucks a month yeah. times millions and millions and yeah. millions of Netflix subscribers. But let us know what you think in the comments below. Does Netflix gaming stand a chance? Are we all about to give up our Game Pass and our PS Plus and our Steam Deck Ultra services in favor of Netflix? Let us know, subscribe, and let Matt know that if he throws my Coke coffee again, I'm gonna lose the sponsorship that I've never gotten in the first place. Mm -hmm.